Good morning, everybody. It's 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. It's Friday. Uh, remember, today is a special day, a day of, of abstinence. Um, it's a Friday of the fourth week of Lent, and Fridays in Lent are really special. I do hope you'll take some time at 3 o'clock to walk down to a church or a chapel, or just bow your head and say a small prayer at the hour that our Lord died. Today's reflection is taken from John chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, then verse 10 and verse 25 to 30. I've entitled today's teaching, Spare the Rod, Spoil the Child. So let's read it. I'm going to read it with you because uh, it's in the, the verses and bits and pieces. So first verse 1 to 2, then verse 10, then verse 25 to 30. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jews were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now the Jewish festival of booths was near. So his brothers said to him, leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. But after his brothers had gone the f to the festival, then he also went, not publicly, but as it were, in secret. Now some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, is it not that this, this man whom they, is it not this the man whom they are trying to kill? And here he is speaking openly, but they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Messiah? Yet we know where this man is from, but, where, but when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus cried out, as he was teaching in the temple. You know me and you know where I come from. I have not come from my own, but the one who sent me is true. And you do not know him. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. Then they tried to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. So let's tackle this text. Uh, I always say the Gospel of John is a little tricky and um, it's not always easy to understand, but it's beautiful all the same. So here is really a 21st century observation that has not changed since Jesus first uttered those words, you know me and also know where I am from. But the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. These are the words of Jesus. In short, Jesus is telling us that we know about him, hopefully we know about him, but of him or the Father we know nothing. Let me say that again. Jesus is telling us that we know about him. And I said hopefully because many people, Catholics too, do not know about even about him. And when I mean about him is where was he born, what did he do, and for that you need to read the Gospels. But of him or the Father we know nothing. You see Jesus never minced words and perhaps because we live in a positively affirmed society, we don't like negative strokes. Yeah? Today nobody wants to hear negative things. We want everybody to tell us that we are good, we are doing well. Um, Somebody spoke of the millennial kids to me and they said um, the millennial kids uh, have never been told that they have, uh, they have lost. They have always been told you did not win so you get a consolation prize. And then the millennial kids get into the real world and they realize well some people win and the others don't get any consolation. So we are living today in this very positively charged world. Everything must be positive, don't say anything negative. So here's the question, should we therefore spiritually spare the rod and spoil the child? You can't do it physically today, beating up people is not allowed. <laughs> but should we spiritually spare the rod and spoil the child? Not so for the Lord. When the Jews needed to be confronted, he did not hold back, he took the stick to them. So have we in that sense exalted the notion of the sweetheart of Jesus and smothered the reality of Jesus in the temple, whip in hand, and for that matter, done the same with today's text, because we can smother it and not see the challenge that Jesus 
uh, throws at us and the, the, the confrontation that he gets into. So I'd like to place today's text in context. You'll hear me saying this again and again because until you do this with every piece of scripture, of every pericope, you will end up just misquoting it. Always look at the context in which Jesus is saying something. Now the first thing that you will notice is that in verses 3 to 9 and verses 11 to 24, these have not been included in the text. That's why I had to jump uh, from 3 to 9 has been dropped. I actually inadvertently read verse 3 to you, but 3 to 9 is dropped and then uh, 11 and 24 are not included. We went straight away to verse 30. So let me fill you in, in the, because these gaps are very important, what's happening in between. Jesus has left Jerusalem for, um, um, has left um, Jerusalem for Galilee as the Jews had sought to kill him. From the text, it seems very clear that they were seeking any opportunity to kill him. We are told that the eight day long Jewish festival of tabernacles was near. And it is here that our saga of knowing, if you see the number of times that word comes, knowing and unknowing begins. Now it is clear that his brothers know about him, but don't know him. The brothers of Jesus want him to go to Jerusalem so that his works may be seen. Maybe then they hope people will change their mind about him. Clearly they want, they also clearly wanted to bask in his glory, in his popularity and he confronts them about it. Something that's very similar to our secular world's demands. Scripture tells us that sadly even his brothers did not believe him. All you got to do is look at verse 5. His own brothers did not believe him. When Jesus does uh, join the festivities in Jerusalem, because we are told in verse 10, but after his brothers had gone to the festivities, then he also went, not publicly, but as it were in secret. So when he finally does join the festivities in Jerusalem, he does it very privately. Why? The word here is secretly, but it should be translated more as privately, because he does not seek his own glory. We are told that he arrives somewhere in the middle of the festival and bang smack into a divided opinion of him because straight away it says now some of the people in Jerusalem were saying is not this the man whom they were trying to kill and some say is he the Messiah and they say no he is not the Messiah so he's entered bang smack into a divided opinion of him in Jerusalem some as I said were complaining about him and some said well you know he is a good man. Some more called him a deceiver as we will see. Translate the word deceiver and it actually translates as Satan. That's what they were calling him. And we know that they called him this. They called him the prince of, of uh, Satan. Now, to discredit him, and this brings us to the main portion of today's text. To discredit him, the Jews seek to expose his lineage. Yeah, We know where he, this man is from. They wanted to reveal what they know about him. See, that's why I began about do we know about him or of him. They want to reveal what they know about him. They know the physical location of his hometown. And they know about him, yet they don't know him or the father and he states that quite publicly he says in verse 28 you know me and you know where I am from I have not come for my own but the one who sent me is true and you do not know him says Jesus you know nothing of the father Jesus won over people with his clear teaching and because he touched their li lives and their hearts if you look at verse 30 it tells us that they tried, they tried to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him because, look at verse 30 now, because many in the crowd believed in him and his hour had not yet come. But many people believed in him 
you will see that in verse 31. Now, seeing the growing belief and the popularity in Jesus, the Pharisees along with the chief priests sent the temple police to arrest him, to suppress this belief in Jesus, lest the people not only know about him, but truly get to know him. Now this is crunch time for us. So let's begin by asking the basic question, do we know him? This knowing about would be, if we were attentive to the Gospels, if we were attentive to the scriptures, if we were attentive to the faithful reading of God's word, or perhaps do we know him just from the homilies and services we attend? You see, the bigger question lies in our knowing him, a knowing that goes beyond a book or beyond a homily. A knowing that is not a second-hand testimony. I know Jesus because somebody else spoke to me about him. But we need to really know Jesus, a knowing that comes from spending time at his feet in prayer. So I want to invite you to close your eyes, to talk to him, get to know him and do that right now. I want to pray with you today that the Lord may bless each one of us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray that each one of us who have been joining me in studying your word, especially in the season of Lent, may truly get to know you, me included, Lord. So often, Lord, I study your word. There's so much of knowledge. But I pray that that knowledge may touch my heart. That I may know you in my heart. That is where you belong, Lord. That when you touch our lives, our hearts, that's the time when we truly get to know you. When we open our hearts to you. I want to pray for a transformation of a change of heart especially for many Catholics who have stopped coming to church, who do not believe in God, who trust in their, their careers rather than making their way to heaven. I pray, Lord Jesus, that the evil one may not prevail. I ask you to bless Father Maxwell and Herbert, who celebrates their birthday today, thank you for their lives. Thank you for all those who continue to be faithful and ardent followers of your word. I continue to pray, Lord Jesus, for the healing of young people, that they may be drawn to you, that you may heal their souls. I pray for the youth of St. Stephen's. Draw them back to your church, Lord. Help them to devote their time, their energy to building this kingdom here on earth. We make this prayer in your loving and your precious name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, everybody, and we'll see you again tomorrow at 9 o'clock with Father Warner. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and leave your comments. God bless you. God keep you well.